we got told of the the hits on him and all like that then you know john never really took it seriously like it went yeah. well, i remember when a few um times when the, oh, there's a hit being put on him he just didn't care i had my back like towards the the, the wall and a patrons come out he got shot and then someone by Gloria Jeans, uh, Gloria Jeans got shot, and the, about all the window where I normally stand got shattered. I remember leaving my house, uh, looking at my daughter, walking out, and going into this dark park with no lights on, and just waiting at a bench, ready for the hit on me. If you want to know what it's like on the mean streets of King's Cross, often referred to as the Golden Mile, where you're about to find out, because we're talking to Neil Cummins, former King's Cross bouncer and personal bodyguard to the man often referred to as the King of the Cross, John Ibrahim. In part one, Neil told us about how he's found his way from Liverpool, England, to working doors in the heartland of Sydney's underworld at King's Cross. Neil, welcome back. Nice to have you. Okay, so we're now going to delve into that uh, that underbelly world, the uh, the world of uh, King's Cross. Yep. And... Uh, Personal bodyguard for John Ibrahim. How, how did that happen? Talk, talk us through it. Um, that came across. Um, well, I was, I was I was walking around with him now and again yep. when I was work, uh, when I was working on the doors uh, for some of his venues, but uh, it actually came full time uh, when DCMs closed down, and um, he actually sent me a message on the final night of DCMs and asked me what do I want to do, yep. and I said um, I just sent back walk with you now, and yep. then he says done deal done that's it. And that's how it was all happened. It was just fr from then on. I was always by his side whenever he came out. Okay, so what what is the role of a personal bodyguard? Just explain it, break it down, so we understand. Just to be by his side uh, when he turns up, walking through crowds. I was all, and inside his venues. Um, I was always um, reluctant to let anyone who I didn't know go near him. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, John can look after himself, um, and he always said that. You know, he always made it clear that I will lead from the front. Um, but I was always, um, I didn't even trust people in our circle sometimes. Mm. So I would look after when walking, I'd be watching them to see if they're doing their job properly. Uh, sometimes, uh, when we were on the streets, I would pull back from him and not walk alongside him and let someone else like Tong and Sam do it. So I can see the view from afar as I'm walking, you know, because he's had a few, you know, hits put on him, um, in the past. So at that time I was kind of like reluctant to walk up. Uh, too close because I wanted to see uh, on the streets of King's Cross, you know, if there was a car coming past. Because yeah. a lot of people, when they walk, they, they, they just got tunnel vision and they're just walking by the sides and just that's it. But they don't see what's going on at the side, the, the, at the back and all like that. No, and quite me, I like to see the, the full view. Where, where the danger is. Yeah. So um, a, a couple of things from what, what you said there that, uh, yeah, John leads from the front and can look after himself. That, that seems to be the reputation. Can he look after himself? Yes, I've seen him, I've seen him blue and I've seen, yeah, yeah um, John can definitely look after himself. He can hold his hands yeah. up and throw him? 100%. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, a couple of, uh, couple of attempts on his life. Were you involved in any of them, or uh, as in, were you witness to it? Uh, involved? In it? Yeah. Now this is going to be. This, this no, is going to be. Not involved. Come um, on, tell me. Um, no, when when we like when the, uh, we got told of the the hits on him and all like that, then you know, John never really took it seriously. Like it went. Yeah. I remember when a few um, times when the, oh, there's a hit being put on him, he just didn't care. You know what I mean? He got on with his life the same. Nothing changed, and it's never. It's always been that way. He never changed his lifestyle. He would go to the cafe on the same time. He would never. He would never be away from the cross unless he was overseas. You know yep. what I mean? So it never deteriorated him to. You know, I'm did, not going. I'm not coming out tonight because, you know I mean? because of the threat. Yeah. Did uh, you ever find out uh, who was involved or uh, how much they were being paid or why? I never. I never knew who the hit was from. Like it was just we got told there was a hit. But I remember one hit was only uh, back then it was 100k. Yeah, that's what we got told, and that was that was probably 2008. That one was yeah. right. And retribution? Well, well there, was just, there was no retribution. We just, I just got told there's a hit on him, and just to be aware and be by his side whenever he was there, that was it. So, okay. Yeah, that's that's. So what, that that was the information. That's, as, that as was the information we that we'd meet up and go. Okay, there's been a hit put on John. Uh, it's 100k. Uh, just make sure you know you watch your back and you're watching him and all like that. But John didn't care. John, yeah, John laughed it off. What do you think? Is that bravado or is that just the nature of who that's he him? Is? That's him. Yeah, I don't think he's actually scared of anything. Yeah, 
Yeah, just didn't worry. Yeah. Now, I did uh, close personal protection with the, the police for um, heads of state, prime ministers yep. and that, and uh, where you're the personal bodyguard walking uh, walking with the person. A lot of times in that role, you've got to advise, look, I, I just can't, I don't think you should be walking down that street. I can't keep uh, keep you safe there. But invariably, they do what they want to do. Yep. And as a personal, personal bodyguard. It's a very intense job. Now, yep. people, you know, to explain it, I just want to get your thoughts on it. When you, you're walking to protect someone, you're sort of, you're trying to take in the environment. Yep. Threats can come from anywhere. You become uh, conditioned to it. Uh, your intuition becomes a little bit wary. You see someone that doesn't fit the, uh, fit the, the group yeah. and stands out. What were the things you were looking out for when you're walking the streets of King's Cross? Because part of, part of uh, John's thing was he was high profile and yep. you, you just explained he wasn't going to go into uh, go into hiding regardless yep. of uh, threats. Everyone in King's Cross looks like a threat. Well, that, especially especially when Underbelly came out and everyone wanted to have a photo with John, that made life difficult, you know, because John would sometimes stop and have photos. And that you, you, can you imagine back in the day when the cross was just pumping, pumping, and there's people barging you past, and then all of a sudden people want to stop photos with John, and they want to put their arm around him. It's like, what the, f you know what I mean? Yeah. With Tongan Sam was ar around, I'd let him, he was always the front man, all right? I'd let yeah. him, I'd never, and I'd never ever tell him what to do. You know what I mean? But if there was someone else around, I would tell him, you know, listen, just go and stand over there. You know what I mean? Look yeah. after his back that way. The hardest part was when John would stand outside Porky's and Dream Girls and have his back to the road. Yeah. And um, when he had his back to the road, that's when I would come and face him because it's the cars with the, the, the windows coming down and driving slow. Because yeah. back then, the cars just went like 5Ks an hour. You know what I mean? There, there was, you, yeah, know, you couldn't get the, yeah, going couldn't, for And the cars would stop, and then all of a sudden, the window would go down, or the, and you'd think, what, what, what's, what's going on here? Or then I'd go and stand behind him. So if there, if there was going to be a bullet, then I'd be behind him. It, I craved for it. You know what I mean? I actually craved for it to be hit by a bullet. Yeah, it did talk me through that. That's I don't a... know. It, it, I you know, when that when he was getting the hits, I was going. You know, uh, if it was going to happen, then I'd, I'd make sure I was in front of that bullet for him. Yeah. That's that's the kind of loyalty I had for him. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I was that was me. I th I think the pressure of being the personal bodyguard, and this is what I found with heads of state, is that the, the humiliation of if you let something happen, oh yeah, you would not be able to live with yourself. Yeah. It, it really would. Uh, yeah, that's your job. Your sole job is to keep this person safe. And yeah. if if you miss, but something... it wasn't just that. It was my reputation of and, and everything being because when it got out that I was his bodyguard, you know, if I got into a, a altercation in a club or anything, and someone tried to like put it over me, mm. then I it goes back to him that oh your bodyguard's a soft cock. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's I had to go around. I used I lost a lot of friends that way because I just didn't want to. I became very, very serious and very straight, and I lost my humour a little bit because, yeah. you know, the pressure on me to make sure that I stood above everybody else as his bodyguard and no one could fucking touch me and no one could touch him. You yeah. know what I mean? Got took a toll on me a lot. Yeah, I could imagine. Why? Why was he targeted so much? What was the world that he was living in? That just uh... jealousy. It's just that's all it was. And I think it, the targets became, as I said, it always goes back to the TV show. Because yeah. that's when the targets came. Okay, there was a few gang wars going on yeah. back then. Um, and they just probably thought, well, you know, sometimes, uh, to me personally, I think he was an easy target because, you know, he walked the streets. He, he didn't care. Go to cafes sometimes by himself. You know what I mean? Like it was, if you wanted to do a hit, it was an easy. It's, uh, and, and you you refer to the, the TV show, Underbelly, yeah. The Golden Mile. I, I can talk on that experience because the, the series after that underbelly badness was yeah. based on the investigation I led and it changed the way that yeah people looked at me for certain yeah. reasons and I had a target on my back from yeah even within my own organization or even if I uh, I got in the witness box at court yeah. the barrister would be trying to carve me up to make a name for himself yeah. that's a bloke from underbelly yeah. and we've just carved him up in the yeah. witness box so I can imagine it with John and the way he was portrayed in that golden mile that was a target that people if you were his bodyguard looking out, wanting to make a reputation for himself by yeah. ta taking him down. Yeah. And that's why sometimes it was easier. Sometimes like, when I got the hit on me at the DCMs, it was like, take take Neil out. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was an easier way of getting to John. What, the, the hit on you at DCMs? Yeah. Talk, talk, talk us through that. Well, um, the, the hit on DCMs was um, when it was going through, uh, um, there was a bikey war going on. And um, prior to the hit, 
um, on DCMs on me, uh, I came across a certain bikey club that was um, in Ramwick Shopping Centre when I was walking in with my daughter, who was about maybe four months old at the time. Yeah. And I had her in a, a baby pouch, and I was coming down to the car park after shopping in, the, uh, in Ramwick Shopping Centre, and um, they followed me down. And um, as I got to the bottom, I knew they were following me, and I knew, oh, fuck, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Um, and I could see it was getting darker in the car park. There was no one around, and all of a sudden, they, they yelled out my name to stop. I turned around. And they just looked at me and said, what the fuck are you coming around there carrying a piece for? I said, what the fuck are you talking about? And, they, yeah. I, and one went to fucking pull. And as I went to pull, I pulled down um, to show them my, my, my daughter in me. Yeah. And they, that's when he went like that. And he says, uh, and he goes, we fuck, don't come in my, my fucking area again and tell your fucking little mate too to fucking stay the fuck away. You yeah. know what I mean? It was it. So they actually thought I came looking for them in their area with a piece. You know what I mean? Right. So um, after that... Um, it kind of escalated a bit because I went back, told them what happened. Um, and then um, they did a practice run. I remember the practice run on Oxford Street outside DCMs on a Saturday night. There was a, um, it was like a Falcon car, maroon car, and it drove down with five guys in it slowly, slowly. And they all yelled out, pointing the fingers like a gun at us. And we just like put the finger up to them, said, ah, oh, fuck off, yeah, whatever, whatever. And then the next week it actually fucking happened, the same fucking car. Yeah. And they came down, and so it was just like slow motion. Everything just happened in slow motion, you know. And it was just uh, prior to it happening, for some fucking unknown reason, I grabbed the bollard and moved the bollard about maybe 10 foot uh, towards the door because it used to be by the – there's a, a salon next door to DCMs. And I used to keep the bollard there, stand there for the rest of the night. So if anyone was to come, I'd check their IDs for yeah. in the door. And just for some reason, I just said, you know what, it's fucking quiet. I'll move the bollard and I'll stand by the door this time. Because that was my spot every weekend, they fired the shots at that fucking window where I was. So yeah. it just, and as it's come past, I'm, I'm just putting the ballard halfway into the door. And as I've come out, they fired all the shots. And one person, as he came, I had my back like towards the, the, the wall and a patron's come out. He got shot. And then someone by Gloria Jeans, uh, Gloria Jeans got shot. And the, about all the window where I normally stand got shattered. Yeah. So um, it was, yeah, it was pretty intense, but happened quickly, but happened so slowly. You know, it was in like seeing people on the floor just lying there with a gunshot wound to them. You know what I mean? It was. Yeah, it's pretty horrific, yeah, isn't it? Massive. And what do you think uh, precipitated that? What was. It was, well, one, uh, I put it as they were trying to do a hit on me yep. to get me out because they knew that I was close to John and I was. Um, and a hit on you is a hit on John. Yeah. Kind by, of think, and I'm his pole. club too. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it was probably both. You know what I mean. And um, yeah, I knew, I knew where it was coming from. You know what I mean. And I think we all did knew where yeah. it was coming from. But um, yeah, it just and that's how it all escalated from that after that. With with John, and I, I've got to ask ask you this uh, this question because a lot of people ask me the, the question just because of my um, time time in the police with with John, King of the Cross. That's uh, the, the reputation. We know what goes on at the cross and, and different things. But, uh, you know, I've also heard him referred to as Teflon John. Nothing, nothing sticks. I'm going to ask the question, answer it however you want. Why is it that there seems to be so much going on around John, but he hasn't been in trouble? Because it's mostly, I think it's mostly because of his, his brother being associated with the nomads. Yeah. That's brought, that that's, was probably the main thing that brought a lot of attention to John. You know, John's the businessman, but his brother, Sam, was the bikey. Yeah. So that, that at the end of the day, they've both got the same name. It's got, And they're going to put, well, hold on a minute. You're telling me that you don't do anything with Sam? Well, no, he doesn't. You know what yeah. I mean? John just wanted to run that street. That's a, That was his goal. I want to take over the street, have nightclubs everywhere. That's it. Yeah, in, in, and in fairness to John, he's, he's had those businesses yeah. and run yeah. them very it's well. very successful. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that was the hard part for him, and to deal with his brother, so he didn't get the bad name. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. So talk, talking Sam, and I know Sam obviously from uh, my time time in the police, and yeah. uh, he he went into the nomads, and uh, I, I know a couple of matters that uh, I've been involved in, and yeah. he's yeah. You know, well, we don't need to go into too much detail yeah. with uh, with Sam, but. Uh, there was a pretty volatile time up at King's, King's Cross. You had the nomad, nomads and then Sam became a member of that. But then this group, and I was in gang squad around the time when Notorious started yeah, to yeah. form. And uh, I, I remember the, the thoughts from uh, people in gang squad, those in the know, that we should jump on this because if the Notorious get up and running, 
they're going to be uh, pretty powerful. What's your they knowledge, wear, involvement? And they were very powerful. And uh, my knowledge of them is like, yeah, I was, I was good friends with uh, the main man there. Um, and everyone knows him as um, Samoan Dave. Yeah. Um, and he was one of the, and till this day, is one of the meanest guys I've ever met in my life. You know what I mean? He's a guy that you just wouldn't want to fuck with. You know what I yeah. mean? And I've seen him blue. I've seen how people, be, like other rival bikies, have shit themselves just by being approached by him by himself. And he's approached 10 and they've just shit themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, his presence was massive. And, you know, when, when he started um, being involved with Notorious, you know, um, I think a lot of bikies started to shit themselves. And, and, and that's, you, you, I, I really, that's all I've seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? He took control of everything. And, um, uh, yeah, I was, a, I wasn't, I was never, patched up with anybody but I was kind of associated with them because of you know yeah. who they're affiliated with and you know yeah I, would, I was their eyes and ears when I was in the cross you know what yeah. I mean so yeah I was affiliated in a, in a way but not patched up yeah how did how did you deal with um, yeah the bikies wanting to come into the clubs and all that because that's yeah bikies don't like to be put on show and no. if ever you're going to start a fight you put a bikey back them into a corner and they've they got to fight a lot, for their a lot of the times I didn't actually put them on show and, and, and usually if they did come into the cross they would have the respect to come up to me and or um, try and ask their way to come in like I've never had a problem with a bikey trying to get into the cross they actually came up and said Neil is it okay if I knew them and that I knew that they were respectful there was, there was no problem yeah. if there was a problem and they come out I never had a blue with them where they go who the fuck do you think you are you know what I mean yeah I've only had one blue, and I, that was when I first started with um, bikies, and that was back when I ran uh, Soho. But besides when I worked for John, I got the respect off them. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was, it was this, uh, you're dancing around each other to a little yeah. degree, but giving each other respect, respect. and yeah. then it doesn't, doesn't yeah. escalate. They knew I was there for a reason in the cross, and it was to look after John's venues and, and other venues that John had his hands in. Yeah. And, um, you know, if they wanted to go in, they had to ask their way. They couldn't just walk in. You know what I mean? Okay, so they gave you that that, yeah. that respect. There was one, and you can name the club if you want. It's probably public record, but there was one big brawl up there when yeah. uh, the bikies have turned up in in numbers, and yep. uh, you guys, doorman, uh, bodyguards, or whatever, yeah. the, at the nightclub yeah. became involved. Do you want to describe that? Yeah, that was the night uh, when the uh, the Comancheros came into King's Cross, and at the time, you know, that was the gang war at the time, and it was kind of full on. And they, they came in in the numbers um, and they stood outside Trademark um, on a Saturday night, egging, egging for John to come out and you know, shouting and abusing all the doormen and saying they were going to storm the, the nightclub. And um, the doorman called me to say, hey, you better come out, Neil. This is what's going on. So I, I went out to the front door. I called John. I called everybody to come out. Um, and we stood there. John stood right at the front. Um, and, um, you know, we were... We were shouting abuse at each other and then all of a sudden you know uh when it all kind of calmed down a bit it just within the next five minutes just fucking erupted you know because yeah. i think what happened was all the all the boys from you know our circle of came to the cross heard about what happened yeah and then it was just all on outside hugo's you know what i mean and it's one of the biggest brawls i've ever been involved in you know like there was on top of cars bonnets we went into the, uh, I think it was called the Lincoln back then, yep. what they had. And we went in there and we just kind of annihilated everything that were in there. And, you know, there was just fists going right around everywhere. Any, any weapons? Nah, I, well, I didn't see any. Yeah. I didn't have any. But it was just me just, you know, going down there to make sure. I was told to go down there to make sure. Like, I think it was kept in the peace. But when you're down there to try and sort things out, no one's... No, when there's not. 20 on 20 and 30 on 30, it's just like... Uh, that's the numbers we're looking at. That's the numbers you're looking at. Like, yeah. And okay. this is while that's... the cross outside Hugo's was chock-a-block. Yeah. And there was a brawl in the middle of the street. You know what yeah. I mean? It was just full on. And like, it was only because, you know, the cops turned up, you know, everyone kind of flipped or they were still on the floor trying to get themselves up. And it was, yeah, it's the biggest brawl I've ever been in. How, how long did it last for? Oh, um, I'd say it lasted a good fucking... 20 minutes yeah okay yeah. so f full on full on like yeah. there was there was whatever was outside was like it was getting I remember someone threw a, uh, a chair on my back yeah. and it was like that's how fucking intense it was yeah. you know what I mean yeah. and uh, it was John in uh, John in no no John was already in uh, I think we put John uh, in a car to get him out of there and it erupted after that yeah yeah okay and 
I got the sense that there was in the cross there was that power power struggle. Oh yeah, yeah. the, the Comancheros had the street, the yeah. nomads, and then the Taurus are in there, yeah. and that was always uh, yeah, we want our peace. Well, once uh, once uh, they got the link in the Comancheros, then it, it 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 was then it was like you know, it was who's going to take over now? Mm. We've come in here to we want a piece of the pie now. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that's that that's what the vibe, uh, vibe we got. And then you get other people coming in, uh, trying to take over. You know, your brothers for life coming in, uh, yeah. trying to do, have their say too. So it was pretty intense uh, a few years. But um, the nomads kind of like only went to notorious because of Sam went inside. Yes. And then there was a kind of leadership um, argument there because a few of the boys at notorious didn't want to go to nomads. They wanted to form their own club, and that's how notorious came about. Okay. Strange. Uh, oh, strange. And because you didn't know who to be times. with. Like you know, there's. You're you're, lo- you're you're with the the nomads because of the, who you're with, and you got notorious. So you, and and they were kind of on edge with each other. Some of them, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It was yeah. Describe the day in the life of uh, working with John. Like I I know if I was looking after the uh, prime minister, I'd be going to this office and then going to a meeting there. Yeah, and... but you see, you, you would be with the prime minister um, all day. Yeah. Whereas John would only want you if it's a certain thing that like maybe. You know, if he says I'm going to go out somewhere, do you want to do you want to turn up in an event? If I'm going to go to the cross, 100 percent, you're with him at the cross. Yeah, you know what I mean. If he's got a if there's a, a fashion show on, he'd go by himself. You know right. what I mean? So he he'd call you. Yeah, with, okay, he'd let you I know think, where yeah. you're needed. You know what I mean? 100 yeah. percent. Every time he's at the cross, you're you're there. Yeah, you know what I mean. But anywhere else, he, he'd like to go by himself. You know what I mean? He wasn't scared. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was his own person. He went around about his, about his day. What about the rest of his uh, family? You became close to them, Fardy, uh, Michael, and uh, Sam. Oh, not so much. Not so much. I hesitate with that. Not so much, Sam. As I said, we've had a, a, like a few run-ins. Not nothing bad, but the thing yeah. is, as I said, I was just there to keep him out the club and his boys. Yeah. So we've had a few runs there. Um, but uh, Michael, yeah, I'm very good friends with Michael. Um, but Fardy, yeah, me and Fardy used to party a lot, yeah. a lot. Like and, and to, to the extent that uh, John barred us for six months for partying. He barred you. He barred me and Fardy for hanging around with each other for six months because <laughs> we partied that hard that you know we get in trouble. Like to the fact is we we were in. I remember we were in Bondi Hotel partying every weekend, every weekend, and we'd just be stupid and just go. We're, we're not paying for the drinks and we we rack bills up of like two thousand, three thousand dollars. Dickheads. And yeah, we yeah. were just dickheads. Yeah. yeah. And it got John got wind of this and just goes, "What are you doing?" Well, Farley doesn't want to pay. You know what I mean? So what, yeah. what are you supposed to do? <laughs> where, where, where's that authority come from with John that he can tell you? Yeah, you know, you're a stubborn, stubborn person. I would imagine. I just you, got you, to listen. To him. I just got to listen. <laughs> and then uh, Farley, like your brother, telling you. Well, well, I think it's the power because of you know, who John is. I think to everybody, he's he's the the main man of the family, isn't he? Yeah. So it's uh, they have to listen to him. You know, if he, if he's got a problem with someone in his family, then he's going to deal with it the way he is. And right. Right, so there, there was that, that loose structure as yeah. families have, but yeah. um, he sort of had the And they've the just got to so. listen to him, you know yeah. what I mean? I think even Sam would listen to him sometimes and didn't like it, but he had to, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But me, if I'm told I can't party, well, sorry, I, I'm not going to message you for six months, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. 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 but you've yeah. been banned, suspended, yeah. suspended from partying. You well, that's a, well, and that, that's what it was like, you know, even when I came to my wedding, you know what I mean? John was my best man at yeah. my wedding. And um, when he found out that Farley was a groomsman, he says he pulled out, yeah, and that was an hour before my wedding. Yeah. He just turned around to me and he says, "Neil, uh, you didn't tell me that Fadi was in the groom." I said, "Yeah, I did. I told you." And he just goes, "Nah, man, it's either it was like I had to pick." Yeah, and I just said, "You can't make me do this." And he says, "Well, I'd, I'm just going to be one of the uh, the guests then." Is and that because you two were suspended from playing with each other? It just was... I, I, to me personally, I, John likes the limelight, so yeah, it was like you know, it's one, of, it's either me or him. You know what I mean? Okay. And yeah. it's you kind of both fight, both Abraham's in the bloody. Uh, well, that's what I wanted because Fadi's a friend, yeah. and you're my boss and our friend too. Yeah. So that's why I wanted you there, and I picked you to be my best man because of you know our friendship. Yeah. And but now you just said, yeah, yeah. That that wedding and this was uh, again. I, I suppose it comes from uh, the notoriety of um, yeah working for John and uh, everything else and the King's Cross and the fascination people. Your wedding became a bit of a, a social. Uh, yeah, it was it was plastered. I think it was something like. Um, because it was it was just as uh, was it Prince William was getting married or something like that. And yeah, they, yeah. They they made an article about it, something like that. Don't worry about Prince William, but this is the the king's bodyguard getting married or something like that. <laughs> King of the Cross bodyguard getting married. I remember I had Channel Nine, Channel Seven following my on the all around uh, Sydney till we got to the church. That we I didn't realise that when I picked the church, uh, 
North Sydney police station was across the road. Yeah. And they all came out and fucking stopped cars coming for me. So it was massive. And I was just thought, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. So it was yeah. pretty huge. That's a fascination, isn't it? Yeah. With that world that yeah. uh, people don't, uh, most people don't get to get to see. Yeah. Um, the situation when Fadi got uh, shot. Yeah, that that must uh, have rocked you because you, you, you were good mates. Yeah, so talk talk us through how um, that how you became aware of that. And what I was I was I was on the doors in Oxford Street at the time. I remember I was on the, um, uh, up the road at a new DCM's venue at the time. Uh, we'd just been moved up the road, and um, someone just uh, messaged uh, my phone saying Farley got shot, and I, I I was trying to get into driving around. I remember running upstairs uh, and asking upstairs, "Is that true? Is that true?" And they said, "Yeah." And, um, yeah, I was in a state and I just, you know, one, I didn't want to ring John, find out, it, you know, bother him. I knew he'd be in a state too. Uh, I remember just leaving work and um, going down to the hospital and just waiting outside. And it's, yeah, uh, yeah. at that time I, I, I wanted, you get that vibe that you want to be close and you mm. want to be, you want to be by their side, but then you think that you're a burden in their way and there's so, there'll be so much going through their head. Yeah. So I, I remember for days I, I wouldn't go in, to where everyone was, I just stand outside the hospital, and then all of a sudden I just went, you know, what am I fucking doing? You know, Fadi's my friend, and John's my boss, and I should be in there. Yeah, and then I just, yeah, it was pretty, pretty heavy. Yeah, it was lucky to survive. Oh yeah. What was the re reaction within the family after that? Oh, it was, um, yeah, it was, it, um, it was massive because I remember, like, I, I think I've never seen John. I remember seeing John in a way where I've never seen him before. You know what I mean? When he was sitting in the hospital, and it, it's like. At the time, is he going to live? You know what I mean? Like cause his yeah. stomach was just like yeah. it, it had to be taken out virtually, um, and um, yeah, it was pretty intense. Um, John was very quiet back then; um, mm -hmm. didn't say too much, and you didn't want to say something to him in case it. You didn't know what mood he was in. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was pretty intense. And uh, how's you still stay in touch with Fadi? Fadi, yeah. I message now and again, yeah. um, but because I've moved on, I don't like to kind of get too close to it, you know what I mean? I just want to yeah. do my own thing now. And I feel like I, um, if I go down there, hang with them, I'll get a taste of it again and I'll, I'll miss that life. Dra dragged into yeah, that and lifestyle. I, yeah, and I don't want to do that. It's not out of disrespect. I just it's, I want to go and see him. I want to go and see yeah. John, but I just feel like I don't want to... Be dragged back yeah. in. Um, one thing, and uh, I, I touched on it at the end of uh, the first chat that we had, and... Uh, you're in a low point at, at a particular point in time when you're considering taking your own life. And uh, what I'm laughing about is not considering taking your own, own <laughs> life. So I'm just treading carefully carefully here. Like it's, it must be horrendous to be in that, uh, that situation. What was it that got you to that, uh, that point? What was it? Um, at the time, uh, as I said, there was the, the gang wars going on. Yep. Uh, then it was, I felt a lot of stress for, for what I was doing. Yeah. Um, um, the gang wars too was against people that I I, I knew yeah. and I've been living with and been friends with, and then I've also got, um, you know, John protecting him and you know I think it was even a hit on him at that time. Then I was I was considering a, a breakup at the time. Yeah. Um, I had my daughter. Um, I just didn't want to be around. I felt like I'd, I'd lost a lot of friends at the time too, and I just felt lonely. I yeah. just, uh, I um, I talked to myself. I, I wasn't turning enough for, I was supposed to be working in the cross. I'd go to the cross Monday to Thursday. Uh, I'd look after the cross. Yep. And I wasn't showing up for work. I'd go into a park in, um, it's called in Queens Park. Yep. Just by Bondi. And I'd just, uh, instead of going to work, I'd be there for four hours. Yeah. And then just, um, I just sat there and thought, what, what should I do? And I just got to a point where I remember this guy I knew and I just went up to him and I just said, listen, bro, I just... There's this guy who's, who's giving me a bit of hassle. I need them sorted in a way, uh, teach my lesson. Um, if whatever you can do, just help me out. And he goes, well, do you know who he is? He says, I just don't know his name. I just know where he'll be at a certain time. And that person was going to be me, but I didn't tell him that. Mm. What he was going to be wearing. And I remember the night I um, I did it. Uh, well, I turned up to the park. I remember leaving my house, um, looking at my daughter, walking out. And going into this dark park with no lights on and just waiting at a bench ready for the hit on me. You know what I mean? I just sat there and I just put my hood over me and I just didn't want to know anything that was coming. And I just, yeah. I was ready for it um, because I just didn't know how to cope with life at that, that, that point in time. 
you know, I, I, I had no family. You know, my father lived in England. I wasn't talking to my mother. She disowned me. Um, so it's like, what do I do now? You know, I've got yeah. no one to fucking vent to or anything. And the um, easiest way to do is just fucking, I didn't want to take pills. I didn't want to fucking try and hang myself because I don't think I could have done it. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's why I tried to get someone to do a hit well, on me. Well, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, and I'm sorry that you went through that. Uh, you know, anyone that's uh, going through that, suffering to the point where you think the easiest way out is ta taking your own life. But uh, I suppose it's a lifestyle that you're in that you, you thought that you'll take a contract out on yourself. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, basically that's what you're yeah. talking about. You, you paid someone to uh well, I didn't to even do have it. to pay him. Uh, oh, right. So he was, just, gonna, he was doing yeah. it as a favour for me. Yeah. So I need uh, this person yeah. ta taken out. And it sounds like an episode off Mr. In Between. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, it didn't uh, obviously. It didn't play no, it didn't. out. Did, did you? How? How? Why didn't it uh, eventually? He, when he turned up and I and I heard the car door um, uh, slam and I and I thought, fuck, this is it. And I, I don't know. He turned around and said to me, just something didn't seem right. Yeah. And um, he reckons he seen me and he knew from my posture and the way I am that it was it was me sitting on there. Yeah. And he said, yeah, the, I was ready, but the thing is, I, it. It didn't look like a. It looked like you. Yeah. And then when I when he tapped me on the shoulder, I remember, it, and I just went, "Oh fuck, this is it." Yeah. And then he slapped me, and as soon as I turned around, he slapped me in the face like he right. fucking belted me. Yeah. And then I thought I didn't, you know, I just thought I was getting attacked by someone else. And then uh, I looked at him, and it was him. And then he he fucking went off at me, and he just hit me again, and he just said, "Don't you fucking ever ever fucking put me in a situation like that again." And we didn't speak for a while. Yeah. Um, it took us a long time to speak again because he said you wanted me to kill a mate. Like fucking, what the fuck are you thinking, Neil? Like, are you, are you that fucking that bad that you need to do this? Yeah. And I told him I just said the stress of everything was just getting to me. And then I opened up, but you know, it, yeah, I can. I had to try and explain to him why I was doing it. But no one really. It doesn't matter how much you explain to someone that what you're going through. You can't. They don't see that. Nah. You know nah, what I mean? It's, it's it, it, it. People are talking in my head all the time when on the lead to it that I just need to do this you know what I mean yeah. I didn't think I was worthy for John I didn't think I was worthy in my in, in marriage at my time I thought I was I was the failure you know what I mean and I, I had no friends and I had no family what the fuck should I be here for then you know yeah. what I mean no, so, it's yeah. a heavy heavy situation when you get to get to that point and I, I think people yeah you got to acknowledge like I'm, I'm curious about the lifestyle you live and you know being the bodyguard for for John, the gang wars going on, you know, shootings at nightclubs where you're standing out the front, all sorts of things like that. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. When, when it's all said and done, you can play that role of the big tough, uh, you know, bodyguard yeah. and uh, yeah, underworld, uh, known in the underworld. But there's still pressure, twenty four seven yeah. pressure. But it wasn't just pressure from the gangs and pressure like even later on there was pressure from the police. I felt more pressure from the police than I did from the gangs. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it was like you know they knew. That I had, uh, and the Raptor put it on me a lot and like you know I, I could see them following me home sometimes you know what I mean like, yeah. and then they come to the club why are you at the club you know why I'm here and then t they humiliated me I think twice um, by making me strip naked in front of a, a line in, the, in, in King's Cross and it yeah. just you know what I mean it was like we've got one over you now you know what I mean in yeah. front of all the crowd I have to take my fucking pants off you know what I mean? Like it's what yeah. the fuck. Like, and look, I I I I'll talk, and it's an interesting conversation from the police point of view. That was there was that gang war going on, yeah. and then the Mick Howie and the yeah. Comancheros, Hell's Angels at the airport, and then on the basis of that, well, enough is enough, and yeah. there'd been these drive by drive by shootings that weekend of the airport. Seven drive by shootings, I know, because I was out yeah, yeah. overnight on those shootings, all gang related. And uh, it virtually bought it on itself. And so Raptor came in and yeah. uh, that was the idea. It was going to put pressure on everyone. And uh, you even on the peripheral and, and probably targeted because of the yeah. association with John and King's Cross and everything else. But, uh, yeah, I, I can understand that, uh, yeah, you'd be feeling, well, why are you why are you going at me so hard? Yeah. But that would be from the police point of view, or we're, we're going to break you down. Oh, yeah. I, I knew they were trying to break me down a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, as I said, they followed me home. Um, they they did that on a Sunday night, knowing why I was there, because at the time the Comacheros were doing one of their uh, runs through the cross. Yep. And then uh, they went to uh, uh, my partner's car at the time and ransacked their car. Uh, and they were, the, the things that they said they were going to do to my wife, uh, like to my missus at the time, like it was just... Mm. Like to to make me lose it so to, they could arrest me. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's interesting hearing it from uh, from uh, that perspective. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, at, at that point in time with 
Raptor when Raptor was uh, born. It, it had to come out because yeah. we were losing the losing the war at that that point yeah. in time. But there's any war, and it's horrible calling it a war when it's in, oh, in yeah. the streets. But there's always uh, casualties, yeah. isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you also got uh, tied up with um, yeah the police corruption. Are we allowed to talk about the um, when you were uh, asking a friend who was a serving police officer to. Uh, <laughs> Provide an address. I think. Uh, well, I didn't actually. So yeah. that, that's that's what what happened there. Because I'm just going off what's what's been reported. So yeah, that's I, I didn't ask for it. I just um, there was a car that kept coming by, um, and because that's what I I observe cars and yeah. you know when you buy a nightclub and I observed and this car just kept going by and at the time it looked like it was going to do something that it shouldn't be doing mm. and I just thought at the time with the gang wars this could be a drive by, right? And it kept floating past, floating past, and then you know because. Um, there was someone that I knew in the police force. I just said, like, "Can you just find out what, what you know what, who this number plate yeah. is?" Because you know it keeps coming past. Okay, and that that's makes how sense. It, and that's how it happened. You yeah. know what I mean? But um, to me, I just think she was very um, into the underbelly, underworld kind of scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, she. I, I think she uh, she ended up uh, doing time, yeah. didn't she? But uh, by, by the looks of it, she just she did a few other things for her, for her ex too, or something like that. But yeah, she liked the bad boys. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. she was just fascinated, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it just became a friendship, and I just like very, you know, weird in a way. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. She would tell things that I didn't want to know about. You know what I mean? I didn't ask for them. You know what I mean? She'd always know when the, our clubs were going to get raided, and it's like, whoa. No, nah, well, that, that's she yeah, deserves I mean? to be inside. If so, that was a, so I just went case. okay, fair enough. But yeah. yeah, okay. What um did the you know or did you notice? Um, and I'm not sure whether you were there during that period, but after the Royal Commission. Like, did you see the cross change, or were you you came in after? I came in after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did okay. uh, like the old heads talk about what it was like before? Because it, well, I can't shy away from it from a policing point of view. Like there was, you know, identified corruption with the, yeah. the police. Everyone had no, their... no, no one really talked about it. Yeah. You know I mean, you get you got your storytellers sometimes, but then you know it, it's. Yeah, I never really listened to them because I wanted to see my point of view. I, I don't want to see I tell you theirs or what happened. Okay. But yeah, but no, they never really. No one really spoke about it. Yeah. So yeah, I was always I always had to just either see that for myself from like a perspective of news or whatever if I looked it up. But uh, no one no one in the circle would ever bring it up. Okay. And with the circle, like a tight crew that you had yeah. working with uh, John uh, Tong and Sam, and yeah. you, you defer to him on uh, on issues with the security. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who else was uh, Who else was in your your crew that you socialised with? No one. Yeah, I never socialized with anyone in the crew. There right. was only a, there was only a doorman I'd socialized with because I knew him for years. But um, as for the crew, uh, when I went home, I I, I was that private uh, that I I wouldn't tell them where I even lived. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, to me, they were just they were we were workers. We were there for a, a purpose, and that's it. Well, I'm not there to have a party with you or have drinks with you. Fair enough. You know what I mean. The only person I probably would have a drink with, and you probably find it weird, but it was uh, Samoa and Dave. Yeah, it was me and him were very close. Okay, that was it. Um, why did you get out of the lifestyle? What? Uh, how? How? And and why? Um, why? Because I felt the loyalty had gone uh, from the circle. Yeah, um, I didn't feel the vibe anymore. Um, I felt that people in our circle wanted me out because of my how close I was with John. Yeah, and because of how close I was with John, that I was the type of person with that. Even if you were his best friend, you're a manager, you're a licensee. If you were doing something wrong by John, I would deal with it. Whereas everyone else would just didn't give a shit. Right. It's like when John goes home, everyone plays up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's that's how it was. And yeah. that, but I was the one that fucking took control of that and went like, "What the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing that? You're not supposed to be doing that." And let, they didn't like that. So I, it, it made a lot of people uncomfortable with me around John. So when I seen that, that I was just like, you know what, I can't be bothered with this anymore. And I did know to trust. Like, so I actually did start to drop back a lot in the circle to watch people because I didn't trust them having my back. Yeah. And then it was enough enough. When I got married, I just went, this is, this is it now. I've, I've, you know, they were blaming me for stuff that I had nothing to do with. You know what I mean? And it was just like, you know, oh, Neil's an informer. Man, what am I an informer for? Like, yeah. he's fucking serious. Like, and it's, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, I had no intentions. Did you? Uh, did, how did you break it to John that you wanted to step it away? Just uh, you know what? Um, after 
there was a there was an uh, incident in the cross um, outside Tremach when that uh, kid got killed. Um, that um, Chilean guy that you know got yeah. kinky. And after that, um, I just went because a lot of fingers were pointing at me, and I was nowhere near him. You know what I mean? And I already, uh, you know, when it happened, I think there was a police series on called I think it was the um, what was it called? Uh, the, there was a, a cop show on. Um, and the main guy in that cop show, um, he was the one who helped me detain one of the guys. Right. And I was trying to tell, um, like, our circle that I had nothing to do with it. But they were pointing the finger at me, saying, oh, you have something to do with this. And I said, yeah. And I said, no, I didn't. So John turned around to me and said, have a couple of weeks off. All right. I said, that's fine. But then when I had them a couple of weeks off, people started talking his ear. And it was getting back to me. Oh, it's better about Neil. It's better about Neil. Or, you know, Neil's an informer. And I just went... Be because of the the Chilean, the... well, because they just they just thought you know um, while while he's out having a re um, he's having a couple of weeks off. Look how good it is without Neil around your side, John. You know what I mean? Right. We don't need him. You know what I mean? Okay. And I knew who them people were. You know what I mean? And it's them the people that I'm watching because I don't trust them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It becomes toxic yeah. when it gets to that. And point, then you know it? I had a guy walking with me who pulled a gun on me outside DCMs. And it's like, but he's now in our circle of friends again. I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he's tried to pull a gun on me, but now he's, I've got to walk with him. I, I'm not going to do that. And um, yeah, I just didn't like it. And everyone was for themselves. You know what I mean? It was just like, you weren't there for a purpose. You know what I mean? I've seen a couple of them all. Let's get a shot. Let's get a photo, John. You're supposed to be walking with him. What are you getting a fucking photo? You see him every week. What do you need a photo of him yeah. for? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I just, yeah, I've done enough. And I just thought, I'm getting out. Yep. Slowly, and I, I never went back. And it's—I think that's the thing that hit John the um, the most is the fact I never went back there saying I want my job back. Mm. I just moved on, okay. and that's it. You know what I mean? And I was pretty heartbroken anyway by the the fact that at the time, um, you know, he—it was in my mind that he he didn't wasn't my best man, and that that really hurt me a lot. Yeah, because I had a lot of respect for him, and um, you know, to do it on the day to say I'm not going to be your best man, and it was hard for me to even ask him. You know what I mean? Because I, I thought he would have said no, but when he said yes, I was like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? And then pull out last minute. Yeah, it, that, that choked yeah, me I a can, lot. Yeah, I can, I can so, understand that. Uh, there was a lot of things going in my head again that, well, why am I here then? You know what yeah. I mean? I, I, I give it all for you and your family, but I don't see it back. Coming back. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's no malice between nah, uh, I just moved on and, you know, I've done the odd message and he's done the odd message to me, uh, you know, like about my book and all like that on what we're doing and photos, if you need some photos or like that for the yeah. book. But I don't, I'm not going to message him every day if I'm not going to meet okay. up. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. We see each other from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> what What are you doing? You, you've got a podcast. You're in the third series of the podcast. Yeah, I've got a podcast, Secrets of the Underworld. Yeah. Um, that's going good. Um, I'm enjoying that. Um, I'm trying to write another book um, at the moment. And I've got um, a TV show coming out soon with uh, Marcus Graham. Uh, where I'm going to be doing a kind of a Ross Kemp Australian style uh, thing where I'll go around uh, talking to gang members and all like that. So, oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, so we're, we're, that's uh, in, in the in the making at the moment too. So. Okay, so you've got a, a, few, uh, yeah. a few things running. Yeah. Uh, enjoying life at the moment? Yeah, yeah. I've got, it's all about my boys now. That's, that's sort of about. So I just didn't go down soccer, watch soccer. I can't play it anymore, so I just go down <laughs> and watch it. Yeah, so. What positions do they play? Uh, they play uh, winger and midfield. So, oh, very yeah. good. So one's a Steven Gerrard and one's a, a Diaz. So that's, <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> there, there, there you go. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. Well, look, I, I've I've enjoyed having having the chat and uh, uh, you've given a really good insight into uh, a oh, world I hope that I have. Most, don't, uh, <laughs> most don't get to see. Would you recommend that lifestyle for people? No. Okay. No. What What would? No. Um, at the end of the day, I've, I think I've said this the other day to, to a guy, and he's he, like to a kid, and he turned around to me. He goes, "Oh, I'd love to be in that kind of scene. It'd be awesome." And I just go, "But what's so awesome about it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Watching your back twenty four seven, getting harassed by the police, uh, losing mates all the time. Like I haven't spoken to my mum since um, what two thousand and eight. You know yeah. what I mean? She disowned me because of working for John. You know what I mean? And I, I told him that. And it, it's like, you know, you've got, what, why would you want to go down that path for? Yeah. Um, it's not going to lead to any fucking, you know, superannuation or anything like that. You know, at the end of the day, retirement funds. I said, you could end up dead or in jail. You know what I mean? So it's, it was a, it was a time in my life that, you know, you don't see it until you're pulled out of that circle, what you, what you went through and what you do. Nowadays, it's funny. I, I have, sometimes when I'm by myself, I have rekindles of, the shootings, uh, the drive-bys, or anything that's happened in my life, 
all comes back and hits me. Yeah. And it's it's funny how it. You know I mean, I just nah. I would never. If my kids even want to go to King's Cross, I'd fucking be. I wouldn't even let them. Yeah. It's just yeah. Well, I suppose a lot of people they look at uh, you know you serve in the military and post traumatic stress, police, emergency services, and all that. But yeah, when it's all said and done, live the world in the yeah. the underworld. And you have the same things. Yeah. You, you see things, yeah. things are done. And I'm, I'm sure there's things that you've done that you look back and go, oh, yeah, I wish I didn't do that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But you seem to uh, seem to have the, have everything together at the moment. So. Well, I'm, I'm using it in a different way now. Like all my what I've, what I've done over the years, I'm using it in a different way to kind of show it or express it or, you know, maybe stop people from going down that path. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, well, it's a good uh, message, and thanks for being so uh, open and honest with oh, us uh, today. Right. I've enjoyed it, and thanks. it's good so. to finally talk to someone that appreciates the finer points of football, <laughs> real football. <laughs> thanks for having me on. All right, cheers, Neil. Thanks.